Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. So you might have noticed that Justin Trudeau has been acting kind of strange lately, repeating sound bites, refusing to answer questions. Almost 90% of Canadians are vaccinated. Almost 90% of Canadians have been vaccinated. The fact that nine out of 10 Canadians have gotten vaccinated and Canadians are continuing to get vaccinated. Dividing Canadians and refusing to back, on, back down on mandates even while provincial restrictions are being lifted. Some people have joked that he's been cloned or he's under mind control, or maybe even he's been replaced by a robot. But there's a specific reason he's been acting like this, and he doesn't want you to know what it is, even though it's actually not a secret. So today I'm gonna lay it all out for you, and then you'll know, but I'm warning you, you probably won't like it. If you like this video, thank you for hitting like and for subscribing and thank you for your support on Patreon that keeps my channel going. That's patreon.com slash the truth or girls. And also I'd just like to take a minute to let you know that the mega discount promo of up to 51% off Keto Elevate is back. And so now you can reap some of the benefits of the keto diet without having to follow the strict complicated rules that go along with it. Keto Elevate contains five grams of pure caprylic acid the most readily ketogenic MCT. You simply put a scoop of this delicious powder into your coffee, smoothie, or yogurt for increased physical energy, decreased appetite, improved mental clarity and focus, improved physical performance and recovery, and more. So if you're interested, please check out the link below for more info and a discount. So let's talk about what's going on with Justin Trudeau. During the pandemic, the federal government has issued these mandates that are unconstitutional and go against the charter. Some examples of this would be the vaccine mandates for work and for travel, and also the quarantine hotels for returning travelers. It's not just me saying that these things go against the charter. Justin Trudeau himself has admitted it. Regardless of the fact that we are attacking your fundamental rights or limiting your fundamental rights, and the charter says that we're wrong, we're still gonna go ahead and do it. It's basically, a loophole that allows a majority to override fundamental rights of a minority. Excuse me? What is this nonsense? No, minority rights are protected, so that's not a valid reason. Is he talking about public opinion surveys? We don't have rule by direct democracy. Otherwise, we'd have the death penalty. Nothing he said makes any sense. But he continues to uphold these mandates which he admits violate the charter, even as many parliamentarians and senators have called for them to be removed. This has left a lot of Canadians wondering, is he betraying his country? Is he committing a kind of treason? Has he broken his oath of allegiance? The surprising answer is no. You might be surprised to hear this, but Canada is not the democracy you think it is. Although we have a democratic process via the parliament and the Senate, we also have a second branch of government, and that would be the Privy Council, the Governors in Council, and the Governor General, who do the will of the Queen, i.e. the monarchy, and who issue orders in council. This is roughly equivalent to executive orders issued by U.S. presidents, but minus the checks and balances. These are basically laws issued by decree through the Governors in Council, who serve the Queen. Laws that are passed through a democratic process through the legislature have to observe the Constitution, the Charter, and the Bill of Rights. But these decrees don't seem to be restricted by any of that. And Justin Trudeau, by supporting them, is actually upholding the oath that he took when he was sworn in as Prime Minister. Don't believe me? Watch the difference between an American president being sworn in versus a Canadian Prime Minister being sworn in. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Now, I congratulate you, sir. Notice the president swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Now watch what the Prime Minister swears to do. I, Justin P.J. Trudeau, 
do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors. So help me God. He swears allegiance to the Queen. Nothing about the Constitution or the Charter. Maybe it's coming? I, Justin P.J. Trudeau, do solemnly and sincerely swear that I shall be a true and faithful servant to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as a member of Her Majesty's Privy Council for Canada. I will in all things to be treated, debated and resolved in Privy Council faithfully, honestly and truly declare my mind and my opinion. Servant of the Queen in her Privy Council. And what comes next is an oath of secrecy. I shall keep secret all matters committed and revealed to me in this capacity or that shall be secretly treated of in council. Maybe he'll get to the part about upholding the Constitution next? Or maybe not. Generally, in all things, I shall do as a faithful and true servant ought to do for Her Majesty, so help me God. And finally... I, Justin P.J. Trudeau, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will truly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Prime Minister, so help me God. Nope, he only pledges allegiance to the Queen. Not a word about our Constitution, our Charter, our Bill of Rights. He serves the monarchy. Surprise! Orders in Council are issued by the Governors in Council on advice of the Privy Council, of which the Prime Minister is a member, and in which he has sworn to serve Her Majesty. So the orders must reflect the wishes of the Queen. They're not a function of the wishes of the legislature or the people that it represents. This is why Trudeau makes no sense in Parliament, dodging questions and repeating cat answers. Here are a couple examples for you. Will the Prime Minister move past the division and agree to meet with some of the truckers impacted by his federal regulations? The science is very clear. The best way through this pandemic is to get people vaccinated. That's why we've been unequivocal on the need to get vaccinated and great news, Canadians across the country stepped up. Almost 90% of Canadians are vaccinated, including almost 90% of truckers. Vaccinations are the way through it and we're gonna continue to be unequivocal about that. Vaccines are critically important, but as the Prime Minister's own COVID diagnosis demonstrates after three vaccinations, we have to use all tools, Mr. Speaker, to get our life back to normal. When is life getting back to normal, Mr. Speaker? Right? I know, and all Canadians know, how frustrating it is to have to deal with this pandemic uh, for now two years uh, and ongoing. Uh, but Canadians also have never been so united in stepping up. Almost 90% of Canadians have been vaccinated. Uh, yes, there are people who are still hesitant, and yes, there are people... Leader of the opposition. Canadians are ready to get their life back, but it seems like the Prime Minister wants to live in a permanent pandemic. Dr. Ham, Dr. Tam, Dr. Henry, Dr. Moore, Dr. Hinshaw, Dr. Shahab all agree it's time to shift out of the restrictions and back to normal life. So why is the Prime Minister so offside, not only with the science, but it would seem like with a growing number of his own MPs? The fact that 9 out of 10 Canadians have gotten vaccinated is one of the reasons why we're able to get through this. Vaccinations are the, one, the thing through this. That's why we're continuing to encourage Canadians to get vaccinated. He needs to end the mandates. He needs to end the restrictions. He needs to listen to his own caucus. Will he do that? Canadians have made it through this pandemic better than many other places because Canadians stepped up and Canadians are continuing to get vaccinated. 60,000 Canadians got vaccinated with their first dose just last week. His refusal to answer questions is enough to exasperate anyone. At this point, a lot of Canadians are eagerly awaiting for Trudeau to get the boot out of office. But of note, um, all PMs take the same oath. So they will be no different when it comes to how they carry out their functions, if you know what I mean. 
since the PM is a servant of the queen, then we should ask, what does the queen want? What is her vision for Canada? That's the question. Queen Elizabeth is 95 years old and she's probably not running the show herself. But she is the representative of the British monarchy. So we should ask ourselves, uh, what does the British monarchy want? What are their goals? What is their vision of the future? Lucky for us, they have actually answered this question themselves. We don't even have to take a guess. Listen to Prince Charles answer this question. And you're going to see that um, Justin Trudeau is parroting his narrative. They're saying exactly the same thing. And now you know why. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. It's unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change. Because we understand that right now we have to fix urgent problems, but in the long run, we also have to fix the system so that it works for everyone. A global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. We need to work together, and not just on vaccines. Canada believes that a strong, coordinated response across the world and across sectors is essential. And as we move from rescue to recovery, therefore we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Everything I have tried to do and urge over the past 50 years has been done with our children and grandchildren in mind. So I can only encourage us all to think big and act now. Notice how they both stress the role of the pandemic as an opportunity, uh, and they both call for a reset. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. For we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. By now, you probably know that the reset they're calling for is the Great Reset, uh, a term coined by Klaus Schwab, chairman of the World Economic Forum. In July 2020, Klaus Schwab published a book called COVID-19, The Great Reset. How did he get this book published so quickly, only a few months into the pandemic? He must have been working very hard. The word reset, I think, is appropriate. Now we have to think how to structure, how to design the post-corona era. Basically echoing exactly uh, what Prince Charles and Justin Trudeau just said. And on June uh, 3rd of 2020, the World Economic Forum also published a video where they called for this reset in the context of the pandemic that was declared just three months earlier. Check this out. Our world has changed into one where we need body temperature surveillance. Protests, seniors locked up, isolated, sound familiar? Our systems need a reset. There's the answer. Notice everything starts going backwards here. Look at this fish going up backwards. Nature returned to a pristine state. The Great Reset! Join us! And the royal family also posted a video about the Great Reset, also on June 3rd, 2020. Yes, the same day the World Economic Forum published their video. They published them on the same day. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives. But it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity, a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. 
We need nothing short of a paradigm shift, one that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace. We simply cannot waste any more time. The only limit is our willingness to act. And We're the time people. to act We're the cars. is now. It's kind of scary. I don't think I'm on board. Sorry, Prince Charles. What the hell? I don't know. The message from the royal family is identical to the message from the World Economic Forum. Which is also echoed by Justin Trudeau. It's all the same. World Economic Forum. Royal Just family. To reset and accelerate efforts. To Canada. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. Are you starting to get the picture? They're all working hand in hand towards the same goal. Every Canadian Justin Prime Minister will be sworn to allegiance to the Queen. As long as the goals of the royal family are the same as the goals of the World Economic Forum, every Canadian leader will be implementing the Great Reset Agenda in Canada. Trudeau is exercising his allegiance, and it is to the Queen, not the Canadian public. He is never going to listen to the Parliament, the Senate, or the public. Because when it comes to the Great Reset, he's not supposed to. He's not even allowed to. I can't imagine what would happen to him if he went against this. I think we need to let that sink in. That's pretty serious. That's what we're dealing with. While we're believing that we live in a democracy and that we have some kind of fundamental rights, some kind of inalienable rights, the truth is we're also subjects of a monarchy and that monarchy can take the upper hand whenever it wants and if what they want to do is implement the great reset as per the world economic forum then that's what they're going to do and meanwhile they're maintaining the illusion of democracy our parliament continues to hold debates well we have some democracy but like about the little things not about the great things Certainly not the Great Reset. When it comes to holding debates about anything that concerns the implementation of the Great Reset, um, Trudeau is going to just uh, continue to ignore any opposition to what he's doing. But the monarchy needs to maintain the illusion of democracy rule. Otherwise, Canadians would get very alarmed. And it could be chaotic. So they need to keep the illusion going that if Canadians continue to comply with whatever it is, business closures, restrictions, um, then at some point we're going to get back to normal. Even though there is, there's no intention to ever let Canada go back to normal. So people assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal, in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. If people realize that there was truly no going back to the old normal, that the pandemic is being used to reset our country and to enter into a new kind of system, uh, there could be a lot of resistance. I mean, it could get messy. The trucker convoy that we just had was only a small sample of the kind of chaos that could ensue. But this is the truth of the matter. There will be no return to normal. And this is the will of the monarchy, which apparently trumps the will of the people. And this is why all the Commonwealth countries, the UK, Australia, Canada, um, have been particularly aggressive in their shift into the Great Reset. If people don't like this shift, and don't want to enter into this new system, unfortunately, they don't have much of a recourse. Unlike the Americans who live under a different kind of system. So this is what we're dealing with here. Sorry to break it to you, but I thought you might want to know. Um, it's pretty serious. It's pretty disheartening.
I mean, who knows? Maybe the Great Reset will turn out to be really great. And we're going to love it. But, I don't know. I have my doubts about that. I think that Klaus Schwab is going to love it. And maybe some people will enjoy this kind of life. But a lot of people are not going to like it. And they're going to feel like, how did we end up here? Oh, we got conned. Not that the pandemic wasn't real. But it was certainly a case of never let a good crisis go to waste. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically with ease and rock-solid security, without the need to present physical documents. It turns out that the monarchy kind of has to con you because when it comes to the monarchy you don't really have a say because it's the queen so you can't argue with the queen it's not like you know it was your elected government and you could do something about it this is the monarchy they have decided that is literally what we're dealing with here i just realized this anyway i thought i'd let you know let me know what you think um and that's it you know Thanks for leaving me a comment. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you again for your support on Patreon. And thank you for checking out the link for Keto Elevate. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.